The minivan, as we know it, is closing in on 40 years old. That's right, four decades. And in that period of time, the minivan segment has evolved tremendously. In fact, at one point in time, there were about 12 models to choose from. But today, there are only four. 12? Oh, I'm serious. 10 to 12. During the 2000s, you could purchase a Mercury Villager, which became the Mercury Monterey. There was a Nissan Quest. There was, oh geez, a whole series of GM products. The Pontiac Montana, Buick Terraza, Oldsmobile Silhouette. My goodness, I'm skipping over so many. And there was even a Hyundai Entourage for about this long. Now, as you can see behind me, we have all four brand new minivans. So that means there's a comparison test coming your way. Now, here are the important things you need to know about the Chrysler Pacifica's versatility. Now, when the third row is up and in place, you have about 919 liters of trunk space, which is the lowest amount, but still very much in the average. When the third row is stowed, it is smack in the middle of the average as far as volume is concerned. You're looking at about 2,500 liters, which is huge. Now, it does have a power-operated third row, and it is the only minivan to offer that. That can be very useful if you use it ever. For some families with only two children, pointless. If you have three kids, it can be very useful. If you are a soccer mom or dad, then it can be a blessing. Now, as we walk around to the inside. The third row is very accessible, reasonably comfortable. I know the headrest is down. Here we go. It actually quite works. Visibility through the side window is pretty good. There's good leg room, decent headroom, and I'm about 5'10", so that works out wonderfully well. Now, when it comes to the second row, more or less the same thing. You have a very good amount of legroom, headroom. One thing you have to note though, when you do get the all wheel drive model, step into the Pacific is actually fairly high because of the all wheel drive. The suspension is a little bit taller, so it's a little bit higher. Something to consider when you have younger children. That is a very important thing here. Chrysler Pacificas, Chrysler minivans are known for their stow and go seating. However, when you have the captain's seats, because of the configuration, they do not fold into the floor, but you still have access to this pretty great storage. However, if the second row seat is slid forward for whatever reason, you cannot have access to it. Now, just a quick word on the dashboard itself. That large screen has one of the nicer resolutions in the entire segment. And we do love the simple ergonomics and the layout. And there's plenty of storage room, including some space be beneath the center console. Very, very lovely interior. Obviously, as a pinnacle, it is fully decked out. Uh, it is a lovely place to spend a lot of time in. Now, here is what you need to know versatility-wise when it comes to the Honda Odyssey. It does have the smallest opening. You can see the arch at the top. That has a lot to do with the mechanism that works the power tailgate, but even so, it's pretty big. As far as storage beneath uh, where the third row would normally go, you're looking at about 930 liters, which is right on spot on average. Same thing goes with, with the space available up to the second row. It's uh, almost 2,500 liters. It is also. It does have a little bit of a bump here, but it's not so bad. I didn't really mention it in all minivans, but it's something you can use. Now, let's go inside. And getting to the third row is a little bit trickier in this van, only because we did not remove the central portion of the second row. But it's kind of easy to get back here, even for a fat old guy like me. Again, the headroom, not bad actually. It's pretty much average. Visibility, when this is not up, it's actually one of the larger side windows, so visibility is good for kids. Good leg room. Nice setup back here. It's actually comfortable. The seats are really plush. All right, so we're going to move to the second row. That makes it a little bit more complicated. 
I'm going to put this back down. It can obviously be useful. There's no captain seat setup in the Odyssey per se, but this definitely works as an armrest, obviously, with cup holders or as a backup plan. I got this. Here it is. You can always have someone else sitting there. Now, unlike the Carnival and the Sienna, you cannot move the second row fore and aft, but if you do remove the central portion of the seat here, you can slide and create a smaller bench. That's about all there is to say here. Uh, step in height is fairly low in the Odyssey, which is lovely for younger kids. Now, if we slide forward and take a look at the dashboard quickly, it's a very different layout from most other minivans. It's totally Honda. The graphic display in the screen there is kind of oldish, reminds me a little bit of uh, what you get in the Sienna. It's nowhere near as good as what you get in the Pacifica and the Carnival. Uh, as far as space is concerned, there's tons of storage. I mean, if you don't have you know, a console, a floating console, where you still have access to a lot of space down there, you have your wireless charge pad right here. This is a very deep bin. Everything works out quite well, in fact. Um, the layout is pretty good. It's very Honda, I guess. That's the best way to put it, which is never a bad thing. All right, so here's what you need to know about the 22 Kia Carnival as far as versatility is concerned. This one by far has the widest, tallest, most square cutout. Literally, I can't imagine anything not fitting in this opening, which can be very, very useful if you like to carry, well, large and tall items. Okay, so behind the third row. This is the most capacious of the bunch at about 1140 liters of space. It's huge. Behind the second row, unfortunately, I don't have the exact number, but I'm very convinced that it is actually somewhere in the average of about 2,500 liters of space. There's another thing too that's important about uh, the Carnival is that the load floor is perfectly flat, whereas the other three have something of a little hump where the third row hinges are probably laid out. Let's go inside. All right, so getting into the third row, once again, decent headroom. This one has a little bit less than the other ones. Same issue with the visibility where the window is a little bit smaller as in the Sienna, but elbow room is good. Actually, there's a little bit more elbow room. You really get a sense of width back here. Now, bear with us because now we're gonna talk about the second row of this SX Kia Carnival. Okay, so there are very, very many functions. Unlike any other minivan in the segment, this is the only one that has heated, cooled, and power operated second row seats. You, and that's not even, we're not even close to being done. So you can also slide the seat, I got this, from one way or the other, right? So you can bring them closer. But what's important to note is that when it's outboard, the seats, you can only recline it so far because of the trim. There's actually a stopper pad to prevent you from going any further, whether you want to slide forward or, or back or recline the seat. But the real killer, the reason why we call this minivan the luxury sedan of minivans is because this might take a while. I don't think we're going to fast forward it, but once you're slid into the middle, you can go very far back, far, 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 far back. Not quite as far as the Sienna, but close. And then you can press the buttons. Ready for this? Now this, we're going to go full lounge mode. I'm not even sure I'm going to bother going all the way. And uh, there's an ottoman seating, as you can see right here, as it rises. Close even uh, the uh, Carnival today, uh, wonder if we would actually set ourselves up as passengers like this. Um, it's a if you want to install kids seats in the back seat, it's actually easier to do so when they're in the middle. So my kids are closer to each other. They don't, you know, little anger management issues may arise from the parents, not the kids. I mean, so. I can only imagine weigh at least 200 pounds each. And um, I can tell you right now, the SX trim, however cool and loaded, is not the version you want to get in the Carnival. But 
when you take a look at the dashboard in this van, um, you don't need to scratch your head and uh, try and understand why we like it so much and we think it's such a premium value. The layout is impeccable. The dual screen setup is amazing. The display is crisp, it's clear, it's beautiful. All the controls, the HVAC, I mean, they're part of the piano black finish, but they look so good. It's, this is ultra premium. What you're seeing now are details that are completely unnecessary in a vehicle. And I've said this before in other Kia products, but it is, beautiful in here absolutely beautiful now here are the important things you need to know about the 2021 cn as far as versatility is concerned first and foremost the opening is a little bit smaller than the other ones because of the way the top part is arced and how the pillars here kind of lean towards the center so it does cut in a little bit in the overall opening it's a little bit smaller than some of its competitors when the third row is up, you're looking at about 920 liters of, sorry, 950 liters of available space, making it the most spacious, but it's not perfect, obviously. When the third row is stowed, which by the way, it's actually one of the little more complicated and labor intensive to get in and out, especially to get in, but you're looking at about 2,200 liters of available space. Let's get. In the third row, same scenario where you have a fair amount of headroom. Elbow room is good, however, the side windows are a little bit smaller. So for kids, visibility, visibility might be a little bit limited. But the real kicker is the second row. Perhaps the all of these minivans, and one of the things I appreciate the most as a father of two kids is the super long slide, whoops, I got this, super long slide second row. You can slide them all the way forward, very, very close for, for whatever reason you might want, or push it way, way, way back, which we found to be extremely beneficial. When driving around, we can slide the kids forward or midway so they can look out the window. And if you need to dress them up, look how much room you have ahead of yourself. And if you want to lounge, you can certainly lounge. This is a huge advantage of the Sienna over specifically the Odyssey as well as the Pacifica. Okay, step in height is a little bit lower, so that's also a great thing. Now I'm gonna slide forward. I got this, just so we can take a quick look at the dashboard. Now as far as storage is concerned, versatility, there's a, a, a pure simplicity to the way the, the dashboard is laid out. It's completely utilitarian. There's no flash, there's no pizzazz. It just works to work as a tool for family. The storage under here is enormous. I mean, literally, I could even put my purse if I had one. Never mind. I love the partial parcel shelf up here. Good cup holders. Deep, deep bin in here. It's very simple, not entirely attractive. Uh, and I have to say the car is not on at the moment, but the screen's display is not exactly the finest of the lot, but it does do the job. There is an immediate noticeable difference. The moment you set off in the Chrysler Pacifica, and that's weight, girth, substance. It is, in fact, the heaviest minivan in the segment, but with all-wheel drive, pinnacle all-wheel drive, right? But not by that much. I think it's 60 or 70 pounds more than the Sienna hybrid all-wheel drive. But you do get the impression that you're sitting on a chunk of concrete and you're surrounded by steel and all of that. It's, it's unbelievable, the difference. That in and of itself could be considered something of a safety feature or a desirable feature. Because a lot of people want SUVs and SUVs give you that sense and FCA, Solantis, Chrysler want you to consider this as an SUV alternative, which among all the minivans, it certainly and absolutely is. There are a number of upsides to that, that sense of uh, you know, security and comfort and safety. Sure, that's all great, fine and dandy, but there are a lot of downsides that come built in with that. And despite having 
the largest displacement engine in the segment, the 3.6 liter, and producing 287 horsepower, only three shy of the Carnival's 290, this isn't exactly the fastest one as spec. Let's understand each other as spec. Um, so when you get on the throttle, sure, the nine-speed automatic transmission, which has been all but completely flawless as well in all of our driving with the van, uh, well, it, it, the engine feels like it's struggling to get this considerably heavy vehicle up and going. Now, you might understand that uh, one of the consequences of that is, well, fuel economy. This, despite, I mean, even though it has the lowest mileage, this is essentially a brand, brand, brand new Pacifica, fuel consumption numbers are disastrous. I mean, in our mixed driving right now, uh, I just got off the highway, we're averaging about 15 liters per 100 kilometers. That may go down, well, that will go down as the mileage piles on and you know, swapping around a little bit more highway for city driving distance, but in the real world, I cannot see, I don't think you should expect anything better than 13 and a half to 14 liters per hundred kilometers. So this is the one that consumes twice as much as the Toyota Sienna. Other things, the driving experience, all of it is quite nice. It is not, however, as refined as the Carnival and uh, the Odyssey. It sits somewhere about neck and neck with the Sienna. In fact, the more I think about it, the more I'm going through this slightly roughish road, I think it might have the most jarring, least comfortable or cosseting drive of the entire segment. In fact, I'm confirming that now as I continue to drive over these less than ideal but typical suburban roads. A 20 inch wheels may have something to do with that. Possibly the, uh, the Korean and the Odyssey do have 19s and then the Sienna has 18s. Uh, but when it comes to braking, brake pedal response is very good. Steering is nice. Um, it's very little absence of assistance, if you will, on center. Uh, generally speaking though, this is probably the least refined of all the vans. As if we, if we dumb it down to refinement, it's on par with the Sienna, but it lags behind the Odyssey and the Carnival. So the question is, does that make this the worst minivan? We shall soon find out. Now driving the Honda Odyssey is... Well, it, it's like, it's comforting. It's like coming home. The Odyssey has been, for at least the last two decades, a staple in the minivan segment. One by which all others are measured. We're not talking volume here, right? We're simply talking about packaging, refinement, driving experience. And that is still true today. I mean, the ride quality is excellent. It's not entirely as cosseting as the Kia Carnival. It's very close to uh, the Sienna. It's nicer than the Pacifica. Uh, what it is, is alive for a minivan, right? Again, minivan comparison. It's nimble, it feels agile. It also weighs a few hundred pounds less than the others. So you can immediate feel like, or feel that in the controls. It drives like a Honda which is huge because this is still the driver's minivan. No matter how good the Carnival is, how com comfortable it is, or how, I don't know, imposing the Pacifica might be or efficient the Sienna might be, this is still the driver's minivan. I mean, the damping is a little bit dry, maybe lacking on the comfort, you know, but because it's lighter, more agile, nimbler, a little bit sportier, that is easily forgiven and essentially forgotten too. Uh, steering is very nice, uh, brakes feel good. And then there's the 3.5 liter V6 and a 10 speed automatic transmission, which like in the Kia, are, are a marriage made in heaven as far as transmission and engines are concerned. 
The V6 produces 280 horsepower. The third weakest, or what I should say, the second weakest, or third least powerful, I don't know, in the segment, but it feels like it's so much more than that because of its responsiveness. I mean, look, it's no small wonder why this engine powers Acura products, including the NSX. And a 10-speed, too, and all the driving that I've done with this Odyssey has never once skipped a beat. It glides, it'll power through upshifts, it'll drop a bunch of gears to give you more power. It's really, really wonderful. But, like the kind of a it is only available front-wheel drive, and that is something that I've wondered about for years and years, given that this shares a platform with the Pilot, the Ridgeline, and now the Passport. It still doesn't make sense. I suppose, well, anyway, that's a debate for some other time. And the other one is fuel economy. Same type of mixed driving, we're still averaging over 12 liters per 100 kilometers, or right around the 12 liter mark. So that means that, you know, in winter, loaded, no matter what, you will consume more. If you do more highway driving, this is the same case in the carnival, that number will drop. But you'll never, ever come close to what the Sienna delivers. And this, price-wise, is almost on par with the Sienna. So there's a little bit of a value debate there when you consider the equipment namely all-wheel drive and hybrid powertrain assistance. But above and beyond all that, this is still the most engaging, involving, and pleasing to drive. But does that make it the best minivan? We shall see. Now driving the Kia Carnival, Carnival, it's up to you I guess, um, is absolutely, it's surprising. But, but I say that, and at the same time, I understand and know that it should not be surprising. Because this is absolutely in line with everything that Kia has done over the last few years with all of its recent introductions. And that is, deliver a vehicle with, that, that, that provides such strong and positive initial impressions that it's almost impossible to overlook them and be objective about the vehicle. But I can do it. I can do it. <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is that it's all here. The drive, the ride quality is amazing. It's really, really good. We were just in a small urban area with bumpy, crappy roads as per. And the van, the chassis, the damping, the, the suspension just soaks everything up with very, very little complaining. Um, despite the 19-inch wheels and the 55 profile tires, which I thought maybe would negatively affect comfort as a whole, because as far as a handling, as far as handling and sure-footedness, this van is superb. I'd say it's nearly on par with the Honda Odyssey, which is, without a shadow of a doubt, the ruler as far as that's concerned in this segment so the drive is really good and then or the ride is really good and then it just gets better the 3.5 liter v6 and the 8-speed automatic transmission are like a match made in heaven maybe once or twice from a dead stop as right as of like right now uh, getting on the throttle if you feel a little bit too throttle happy I mean, I noticed that the transmission kind of hunts between first and second gear, but that's not entirely unusual. But barring that, the transmission glides through its gears, and the 3.5 liter V6 just delivers its 290 horsepower as though there was nothing else to do. It's amazing. The downsides, however, the downsides, however, as you notice, I just got off the highway. There was a little bit more wind noise than I would have liked. So that is also maybe in line with some aspects of modern Kia products where corners are cut. To keep costs down, they have to be cut, and that would be one. Uh, they didn't cut the, you know, as far as the chassis and the powertrain is concerned. Uh, but the downsides are, well, it's only available front-wheel drive. And for many northern U.S. and Canadian markets, that is a big no-no. So that's a downside. 
Another is that, as I, you noticed, I just got off the highway, and I've been I've done a number of kilometers on the highway, and my current indicated fuel economy is 12 liters per hundred kilometers. Now it's the mix right now is about 60 highway, 40 city. If you switch that around, 12 liters per hundred kilometers is as good as you could possibly hope for. That is a considerable amount of fuel. In fact, when you compare it to the Sienna, this is one of the vans that you know are closing in on consuming almost twice as much per hundred kilometers as the Sienna. But when you consider how much less expensive the Carnival is, consuming a little bit more fuel might not be an you know a total penalty. Anyhow, this thing is impressive. But is it the best minivan out of this quattro? We shall see. So driving the Sienna is a question of dealing with mixed blessings. Bar none, hands down. You can't argue against it. This is the most fuel efficient minivan of them all and it's even more fuel efficient than a number of wannabe three row midsize SUVs. In fact, look, we're averaging 6.9 liters per 100 kilometers right now in mixed driving and that applies to the real world. I've driven this exact van on a few occasions over the last few months and that's where my average more or less sits unless there's snow on the ground which has happened. Uh, but seven liters is real and seven liters is also about half yes half of what the chrysler pacifica will end up consuming that is huge yes the pacifica will consume 100 percent more fuel that is definitely an upside another one is that it is now available with all-wheel drive now, system output is 245 horsepower for this, for the electric motors and the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine. With the second, or, or other, I should say, electric motor on the rear axle, you actually get a little bit more initial torque. So this off the line actually feels quick-ish enough. And it also will give you all the necessary traction especially if you live in the northern states or in Canada it is a fantastic thing to have here though is when things start to kind of fall apart sending the power to the front wheels is an ECVT which functions like a CVT but isn't exactly like a CVT there's no belt per se but what that means is that when you are requesting, requiring medium to heavy acceleration, it will ra rise, raise, increase engine speeds and peg them there. And unfortunately, Toyota's 2.5 liter four cylinder engine is noisy. And when it kicks in like it just did now, it's not so bad because I'm driving like 23 kilometers an hour and I'm not accelerating, I mean, at all. Uh, but when you do accelerate slightly more, when it kicks in, the noise, the vibration, the harshness are omnipresent and unfortunate and definitely uh, lag far, far behind from the V6 engines in the competitors. The driving experience itself is really good. It's not as comfortable or costing or refined as say what you'd get in the carnival it's somewhere between the pacifica and the i got this the pacifica and the odyssey apologies four vans difficult to keep track of uh, but there's still enough compliance thanks in large part to the 18 inch wheels you get with a limited and the xse gets 19s so that'll probably have a slightly grainier ride and grainy is a good way to describe more or less uh, what you're feeling through the controls when you drive it there's that's that layer of refinement i'm talking about that the the kia excels at but above all fuel efficiency unlike any other um all-wheel drive 
That makes this van very interesting. But does it make it the best minivan? We shall find out very soon. And so in conclusion and in fourth place comes the 2021 Chrysler Pacifica or what we have deemed the SUV of minivans. The reason why it comes in fourth place, well, it's its relative lack of refinement. It's extremely high asking price, not only for the pinnacle, but even for the base model. We are ignoring incentives, obviously. Most importantly, it's fuel consumption numbers, which are catastrophic. Now, in third place comes the surprise of the group, but as I've said, not really a surprise. The 2022 Kia Carnival has the most value, has so much kit. It is essentially what we have deemed the luxury sedan of minivans. Its refinement is unbelievable. Everything about it is impressive, but we are slightly annoyed by its lack of all wheel drive. And one thing that I do mention or that we do touch on many times when we review Korean products is their long-term reliability, quality, and durability. It's still impressive though. Don't get us wrong. And in second place, not the Honda Odyssey, but the Toyota Sienna, in fact. The funny thing though with the Toyota Sienna is that at least half of us that have driven the vans today would actually choose this one over the Odyssey, if mostly for the fact that it is available with all-wheel drive, is extremely fuel efficient. It's also the most honest minivan, the one that is not trying to be something that it isn't. It just gives you space, comfort, and versatility, as we've shown on the, in on the inside. That the 2021 Honda Odyssey is still, and we do know that the 2022 is available for sale, is still the best one. As far as reliability is concerned, as far as the driving experience is concerned, this is still the ultimate package. This is the one that all of us would take on the longest possible road trip with our families. And we also know that resale value is gonna be really strong. You will never go wrong with a Honda Odyssey. That's why it's our first one. But personally, I like the Sienna a lot.